Welcome everyone. So, we will now begin with, a, with problems of sequential decision making. Just like we had seen in the end of the previous lecture where we had a, a, uh, a system with a scalar state who, which was evolving over 2 time steps and over there what we had found was that the, that the way in which we are given information about, about, uh, uh, about, about the system while taking the action made a difference that, that information made a difference to how uh, we can perform, how well we can perform. So, this is something that we will we will dive deeper into while and this is something that will come up again and again as we uh, explore this, partic this particular problem class. So, what we will define now is a general purpose way of, defi of, of defining uh, and considering problems where we are taking actions in a, uh, at multiple stages one after the other. Uh, in and the goal of the, of taking these actions would be to minimize a certain cost that would be defined over the time horizon of the actions that we will be over which we will be taking the actions. So, so to define this, this is what is this side this problem class is what is known as these are this is what is often known as a state state space model. For sequential decision making. This is uh, the problem formulation that we will come to is known in various ways in uh, across different disciplines. It is known in some disciplines as stochastic control. stochastic control problem formulation sometimes it is also called a markov decision process this is the term that is usually common in the control community this second term is usually com is common in the operations research community operations research or even the computer science community. So, our model is as follows, we have we are going to assume time evolves in discrete steps. Time evolves in discrete steps, so it is assumed that uh, the the any any of anything that op happens in between two time steps is not uh, is is not completely accessible to us what we know is only uh, what happens at the end of uh, uh, at the end at or at the edges of the time steps okay so we are going to assume this the that the time evolves in discrete steps these will be denoted by k and k will range from 0 1 dot 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 till n minus 1 where n is some finite integer. Okay. The, the system that we are considering is modeled using its state. X k is the state of the system. At time k. This, this the, the state of the system at time k is assumed to is assumed to encompass enough information about the system so that we can we should be able to talk about uh, about the the uh, the problem completely once we know uh, once we know about the state of the system okay so the the main thing here is that the cost function that we will consider in this problem we will see this in a moment has to be a function of the state so the state is some some description is is some set of variables that describe that give you a complete description about the configuration of the system right at every time k we have because we are taking decisions in a sequence then at every time k we have an action that needs to be chosen 
So, u k at time k is a control control action or decision to be chosen at time k. W k W k is a random parameter. So, this is a random parameter it is a random parameter it is it's, it's essentially an external disturbance ok. It, it is an external disturbance. So, this is an external disturbance also called noise. So, how is x k different from uh, how is u k different from w k? w k is a random parameter whose essential which that is essentially chosen by nature it is its value and its distribution is chosen by nature we do not have we cannot choose we can by by we cannot affect the distribution uh, we cannot affect the distribution of w k ok. And n here the n that that I wrote here this n is called the time horizon it is the horizon of your decision problem ok. Now, the when we take action u k at a time at a time k the state of the system evolves from x k to x k plus 1 and it evolves according to the following equation. So, we assume that there is this this a function f k such that when you take action u k at time k when this original state was x k you get the next you get the next state uh, at time k plus 1 given by f of f k of x k u k w k w. So, this so the then when so w k being random ensures that the next state that will get realized when you take an action at time k is a function uh, ca cannot be completely determined by just the action just the action that you take and the state that you were that you were previously in. Because w k is random the next state that will evolve is random and hence in some sense the future is random right. So, this f k is what is called dynamics. These are called. This is called the these are, uh, the the function f k is called the uh, called the, the dynamics of the system. Okay, it tells it tells you how the state of the system evolves evolves with time. The cost, the goal of the problem is 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 to minimize a certain cost. Minimize the total cost. the total cost incurred from k equal to 0 till k equal to t uh, till k equal to n. So, and the total cost is given in as follows. So, the total cost is total uh, I should so the total cost is given as follows it is g g n which is a function of x n plus a sum from k equal to 0 to n minus 1 g k of x k u k w k. Now, notice that because there is a uh, and there is the presence of w k in this and because the state that is going to evolve through the throughout the problem is also go, is going to evolve randomly this cost is actually a random cost. So, what uh, what we have seen from the expected utility theory and so on is that what one needs to do when when one is faced with this sort of a situation is is that one must minimize the expected cost 
So, the complete problem formulation is that one, one needs to minimize this expected cost comprising of these terms. Now, I will tell you in a moment right now what these terms are. So, if you look at this term here g n of x n, this is a function of only the, the, the state that, that gets realized at time n. We take decisions at from time 0 to time n minus 1 that at once we are done with taking the decisions we have we, we would we reach reach a stage where so where k is equal to n minus 1 you have taken your final decision at time at the last decision at, at time n minus 1. But then the system evolves for one more time step and goes to time goes to time n at time n the state then becomes x capital N. So, the x capital N is the state that the system ends with okay, at the end of the system ends with or the system uh, ends up with at the end of the time horizon okay, or the, the, uh, the, the, it, is the prob, it is the state at which we can we sort of say the problem has ended. Okay. So, the or it is the state at which that the system is in when we say that our problem horizon has ended. Okay. So, this therefore, this is therefore often called the terminal state. This state is called the terminal state and this cost function here is called the terminal cost. These the other terms here, these here these terms here, these are costs that are associated with every time step. So, these have another name, they are called these are called stage wise costs. So, if you look at the cost function here, the cost function is actually a sum of cost that you occur, incur at every stage. There is a cost for uh, and there is a cost for every stage from 0 to n minus 1 which depends on the on the state that you are in, the action that you took and a random effect due to the due to the noise in the system and and then also there is a terminal cost which is a function of what state you find that that the system finally finds itself in at the end of the time horizon that is a terminal cost. The total cost is what we need to minimize as as part of the definition of the problem. Okay. Now, uh, if the because we are going to be uh, we are going to be taking this uh, decisions in a, in a sequence, we, we can consider two different types of, of decision problems here. The first kind of problem is what can be th what can be called an open loop problem. an open loop problem and in an open loop problem what we are doing is we are choosing this means that we are choosing decisions u0 to un minus 1 these end decisions without the without any knowledge about about where about the system okay so the it's as good as having chosen as good as choosing these these actions u0 to un minus 1 even before the system begins to evolve so, these are what chosen before the system evolves. The other type of problem we can consider is the one where which is a closed loop problem. In a closed loop problem when we are choosing u k you have knowledge of everything that has happened in the system up until time k. So, you have knowledge of all the states that have this the, the sequence of states that the system has been through, you have knowledge of the previous actions that you have taken. Okay. So, u k is, cho is chosen chosen based on what we can say is the history. up until time k. Now, you will soon see 
that actually the entire history up until time k is redundant and uh, the, what one only needs to uh, several parts of this history of up until time k are redundant and what one only needs to know is the state at time k. So, this problem is also often posed in the following way that uk where we ask uk to be chosen only as a function of xk. So, this in these kind of problems is without loss of generality we can choose only with knowledge of x k. So, the latter is the kind of problem we will be considering in this in this course. So, we will be looking at closed loop problems where the where u k is to be chosen as a function of some some information and in this case the information is is x k at time k. One other point need that needs to be made about the about the closed loop problem which is to know which is the which is to understand the sequence in of uh, in which the noise and the actions uh, the noise the system and the action as are realized. So, so u k is chosen with the knowledge of x k. But u k when we choose u k we do not have knowledge of w k. w k gets realized after after we have chosen u k. So, when we choose u k we know x k, but we do not know but we do not know u k. So, in this dynamics in the equation in the dynamical equation here u k is a function of x k, but u k is not a function of w k. So, the next time the state that will get evolved that evolves at, at the next time step is not completely determined by your action and the previous uh, and the previous state. So, it is it is de determined by your action the previous state and an exogenous random effect which is which is the effect of noise. So, w k is not known to you when you are choosing u k although x k is known to you while you are choosing u k. So, to understand this problem uh, this problem a little better let us let us consider an example. Let us consider an example which to understand this problem class a little better let us consider an example. The example here is that of inventory control. Inventory control problems are applicable in cases where say for example, you have a shop say selling shoes and what you want to do is you uh, you want to decide how much inventory should you be ordering each day. The shop the inventory gets consumed when when demand arrives in the shop, but demand is at uh, demand how many people will arrive and how many shoes will get sold is something that is random. So, what you need to do is uh, in, uh, across uh, across uh, the decision epochs and across time steps that arise in the problem what you need to do is decide how much how much you should be how much inventory should you be refilling okay so let us look at this problem a little bit more in detail so let x uh, so what we want to do is we want we have again a time horizon n we have a time horizon n let x k be the stock available at the beginning of the kth time period. So, what we have here is you have time that has been slotted here say suppose this is 0, this is 1, this is 2 and so on this is this is n minus 1 and then here is n. So, x k is here suppose k is somewhere here then x k is the stock that we have at at this time at the beginning of the uh, at the beginning of the k time period. 
So, when k is equal to 0, so when you have when you are at the beginning of the 0 time period, the x 0 is the stock that you start with, x 1 is the stock that you have at the beginning of the first time period and so on. Now, u k is the stock that we that we will order. Okay. This u k is the stock ordered at the beginning of the kth period. So, u k is the amount of additional shoes or inventory that you are ordering at the beginning of, of time period at the beginning of time period k. Now, this talk there are different types of models, but we are in this problem what we are going to assume is that the stock where that once when ordered at time k actually gets instantaneously delivered. So, it becomes available to us for fulfilling the demand at, at the beginning of the time period k itself. Okay. So, we will assume that the stock is immediately delivered. Physically this would imply assuming that assume delivery is immediate. Physically this would imply that we are we are assuming that the delivery time is far less than the inter uh, uh, than the, the, the time that is essential that is there between between the decision epochs. Okay. Okay. Now, the demand that that we see okay, is uh, the demand that we see at any time step is uh, is is random and we are going to denote that by wk so the source of noise in this problem is the no, is the uh, is the randomness due to the demand okay so wk is the demand at time k we are going to assume that these de these demands are independent. Okay, so, so we'll assume again at so demand uh, rather during time period. Let's say not at time. Period, okay, it's during time period period k assume w0 to wn minus 1 are independent so wk if you look at the time period that starts from time k wk is the demand that is that will get realized in this time period so, in the time period that intervenes from uh, from k to k plus 1 is, is the time period when we will see w k getting realized. Now, once again recall that we said that in a stochastic control problem u k cannot be chosen as, as uh, uh, in our model u k cannot be chosen as a function of w k. So, as a consequence w k is something that is not known to you at time k when when you are when you are choosing u k. Okay. So, this is a demand that will get realized after you have chosen uh, chosen how much how much inventory to order. Okay. So, the sequence of events is that there is a state at time k you then choose uh, the amount of inventory to be ordered at time k which is u k and then comes the demand uh, uh, which is a random event caused by nature and that demand then consumes consumes the uh, based on that demand your inventory will get consumed okay so the uh, so uh, so bear this in mind that, that that so the sequence here is xk becomes known then u k is chosen and then demand is realized. Okay. 
okay, demand or W WK or which is demand is realized. All right. Okay, so we will continue more about this model in, a, in a, just after the break.